Hi everyone, I'm Dennis Foley with Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about an egg crate. We've all seen these, we've all heard about what people uh, think they do <laughs> and what people say they do. So let's, let's look at the common egg crate and figure out when we apply a little bit of science to it what it really does and, and how well does it do anything at all. We know that sound, only three things happen. It's absorbed, diffused, or reflected. So we're going to take those three physical law principles that deal with sound and we're going to apply it to the egg crate and then hopefully you can make your own decision of how uh, effective these, these are and, and make, make, think, uh, think through the process yourself and, and figure out for yourself uh, if they really are effective at all. Okay, the first of our three uh, laws of physics, absorption, diffusion, or reflection. Let's examine absorption first with the egg crate because Logically, it's a good start because the material appears to have some sound absorbing uh, properties just by touch and feel. This is a styrofoam uh, egg carton. A lot of them are cardboard so or paper probably based products, but we can use this as an example. And I went on the internet and I found some absorption curves for egg crates, believe it or not. <laughs> so here's what we have. We have a 200 start point, a 650 peak, and then leveling off about 2,000. So it does absorb a little bit. I think the absorption coefficient here was about 70% at the peak around 650. I can't think, however, acoustically any usages for this kind of curve. Who would want to have a huge amount of absorption at 650 cycles, kind of the end of the vocal spectrum range, uh, nothing on the low side and, and basically nothing after that. So this kind of inverted uh, bell-shaped curve, if you will, or bell-shaped curve is something that uh, we try to avoid in acoustics. So I think from an absorption standpoint, the, the curves that it represents are something that we try to stay away from in acoustics. Now we'll, we'll look at uh, diffusion and uh, I've heard that people say they're good diffusers. So let's, let's examine that from a scientific perspective and, and see what that's about. Hi everyone, so let's examine our uh, egg crate now. We've looked at absorption. Let's examine our egg crate for diffusive properties. If we take and measure the depth of the egg crate, we get about two inches in each compartment. Well, they're all the same depth because they're uniform throughout the whole crate. So if we apply uh, what we know about diffusion, we know that the well depth in quadratic diffusion, which is something uh, most of us are familiar with in, in the acoustic world, has to be at a quarter wavelength. So we just measured a two inch depth at a quarter wavelength times four produces a frequency of around 3300 cycles. So now we have a series of well depths at 3300 cycles and it's uniform. I can't think of any purpose for diffusing just a single frequency. Um, so I, I really don't think that a diffusion would be a, a good uh, term uh, to apply to, to an egg crate because you don't want to diffuse just one particular frequency. You want to diffuse a range of frequencies starting from a chosen start point and an ending point and you can do this quite uh, readily with quadratic diffusion. So. In summary, if we look at the absorption curves of the egg crate, it's minimal uh, and it's frequency specific, kind of around six, seven hundred cycles. And then with diffusion, it's around 33, 3400 cycles uh, repeated of diffusion. So neither one are beneficial in, in room acoustic analysis and room acoustic treatment. So kind of a, a fun exercise to look at, but when you add it all up, not really acoustically viable. Thank you.